I'm in Monterey, California at the Sony Kendo event. And uh, this is the second Kendo event they've had. And I'm sitting here with Chris Burkhart. Hey, it's a pleasure. Thanks so Thank much for having much. me. Yeah. You know, Chris is um, a longtime landscape photographer and I uh, had the opportunity to uh, sit down with him at this event and I couldn't pass it up. And we're going to talk a little bit about landscape photography, Sony cameras, how we've uh, done things. He and I have visited many of the same places uh, numerous times in our world travels and talk a little bit about what landscape fa photographers are facing these days when they're out in the landscape. Yeah, sort of a state of the union, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> state, of the state of the union. So uh, where's the last place you've been? Uh, good question. I, I just most recently got home, which I'm the most excited about. I live only about two and a half hours from here um, in Pismo Beach, California. But this year, since January, I've, I've been in Vancouver. Um, I went to uh, South Island, New Zealand twice. I went to Hokkaido, Japan. I went to Patagonia. I went to um, starting a blank, you know, Alaska, uh -huh. uh, and I went to the Aleutian Islands. Oh, uh, God, Alaska. they're all beautiful places. I'm doing Hikado next January, I oh. believe it is. Uh, New Zealand is still. Yeah. There is something about New Zealand. It, I, it, you I, know, and, and it's, the, it's the culture, too. You know, it's the people. Oh, it's, the, just, it's just everything about it. I feel like the, the landscape itself, it, it's as if you had, like, you know, California stayed green all year long. And it just... <laughs> oh, it's just... Yeah. I'm mind blown by it. There's so many places to go. You know, a lot of iconic places. Yeah. You know, um, uh, well, there's one place I always go there is Earnslaw Burn. I don't know if you've oh, ever flown cool. into Earnslaw Burn. You have to take I've a helicopter. I've heard, but I haven't. Yeah. Just like, uh, hundreds of waterfalls coming off wow. a glacier, thousands of feet high. It's like, who can invent this stuff? Yeah. You know, the stuff you see in storybooks. Well, and that's kind of what it feels like. It's like someone designed this whole place like a set. Oh, it's you just know? amazing. And you know, there, there's a lot of amazing places in the world. And um, before we get into more amazing places, let's talk hardware for a second. Let the, yeah. the hardware geeky part of our things Always, come yeah, out. Always, yeah, for sure. And um, you know, I, I was asking Chris what, what he shot with before, and I'm going to let him kind of give his little um, story. But uh, he's been with Sony for quite a while, but you started with... Yeah, I mean, I, I started like most photographers. I think I was like shooting Canon, way, you know, just 10, 12 years ago. And then I, I migrated over to Nikon, and then I became a really early adopter to the Sony system. Uh, mirrorless intrigued me and I was in many ways scorned by my colleagues <laughs> and my editors were like what are these files you know what are you doing and um, <clears throat> I, I really I really just fell in love with the size and the, and the scale of what I was being able to produce like how big these prints could be made um, the NEX7 was kind of my workhorse back in the day um, it was the camera that I, I shot a lot of my my favorite work with and at a time there was even a time where I was shooting kind of like Nikon Sony and then I just went all in and now yeah I'm a dedicated Sony user a7 r3 is my go-to oh, camera beautiful. the a9 when I'm shooting action sports um, and then the a7s has also been too has been a critical camera for my low light work which which I've been able to film with and just it's a it's an amazing amazing piece of technology really at that point in my career, I was traveling to these places where I needed to be light, efficient, and fast. Sometimes we were camping, and I needed something small. And then the mirrorless system—it really caught my eye. And you know, there was even a time where I was using partly Sony, partly Nikon, but I switched completely over to the Sony system, and I just sold everything else I owned. And um, and you know, the A7R3 has been just my my—it's my, my go-to. It's my workhorse. There's never been a camera for me. You know, there of course, as the system progressed, there was always like little woes and problems, yep, yep. but. The R3 just, it, it solved every issue that I had and, and the A9 still my go-to for action sports. But the A7S, I'd say in terms of like the camera that has like, I have a soft spot for. That camera for me was, it was a game changer because it allowed me um, to start shooting stuff that I never thought possible. You know, we, we made a film about surfing under the Northern Lights and that was the camera that we, we, that we used. It was incredible. I was really blown away. That A7S is like seeing in the dark. It's like the, it ate carrots or something. Yeah. I remember when they first showed it to me. Yeah, exactly. They took us into a dark room. So what are we looking at? Well, look at the camera and you'll see. Yeah. And I'm like, really? Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's like there's one tiny little light in the room and it was like... It's so crazy. Yeah, and and it, I think that was an awareness of where this whole digital and sensor and yeah, it, mirrorless it, right. thing was going. It was an eye-opener. It was kind of like, you know, and, I, and I'm sure that that technology, soon they're going to outdo it. They're going to make it better. Oh. But it's just like, you just, at the point you're like, wow, like this is the future, really. Like this is this is why we shoot these cameras, you know? So, you know, the A9's got it licked, and I mean, I love that. And then I put Lug U, the A7 III, and I, I, I print on a 99 Epson, 9900 Epson printer. 
And I've done uh, 44 by 77 inch prints, even from the 24 megapixel A9 mm -hmm. file, and it's just freaking amazing. Yeah, it really is. The pixel depth is, is and the color, um, basically like just the way that that pixel interprets color is what's yeah. really, I mean, I would say in some ways, the A9 sensor is one of the best ones that they've been able to come out yeah. with. Like, it's really impressive. And you know Sony's got other things up their sleeve. I yeah. mean, you know. Sony's kind of always gone a little rogue. They've always been a little like, to me, like they're not following this traditional model. They're just like, yeah, we're gonna come out with a new camera and then we're gonna come out with another one. And it's like all of a sudden, you're not even expecting a release. There's no like rhyme or reason. There's no like every one and a half years. Yeah. It's like, they've just kind of popped stuff out <laughs> out of nowhere. Just, and <laughs> it's kind of been mind blowing to where it's made me really respect them because it's not like they're withholding in technology, you know, until the right, you know, marketing time. They're just putting it out there. And I, and I feel like people have really appreciated that. Well, you know, they're, they, they're aiming to be the number one guy and they're doing a pretty good job of it. So mm -hmm. yeah. we'll see, but let's, now, let's switch gears a little bit and talk about your photography, how you got into it. You've made quite a name for yourself, uh, a lot through social media. Um, I, I think you've done a super job of that, but your images are tremendously great images and you've done some amazing projects. So how did you get into all this? You know, did you jump into photography as a career or did you switch? What happened? You got a story. Um, in the Reader's probably, Digest version. Probably <laughs> too long of a story for, for yeah. that we have today, but ultimately I wish that there was some quick easy, pivotal moment that made life so simple. But to be honest, I, I, honest, I never even traveled when I grew up. Um, I grew up in a really small town, uh, single parent home. You know, photography for me was just something fun. I, um, the beach was, a, was my first canvas and it was in many ways like a, a babysitter, mm -hmm. I guess you could say. So I would, I would spend my days, hours there and, and ultimately when I picked up a camera and it was this just great expression for, for creativity and it was a kind of a release and outlet for me um, I, I realized at, at the same kind of pivotal moment, I was like, this could be my ticket out of here. And this could be my ticket to see the world. Because that's, I didn't want, I mean, as a young kid who never traveled, that's, that's all I wanted. I wanted to see the world outside the politics of the dinner table. Yep, yeah. And I wanted to know what was out there. And I used to flip through magazines and just, you know, dream about these places. So I did like any intelligent 19 year old would do. And I quit my job and I quit <laughs> school and I pursued photography. And I'll tell you what, it sucked for a long time. I mean, it was like shooting the worst stuff you could ever imagine. I would run up to surfers on the beach and I would, you know, out of breath and I'd be like, I shot a picture of you. You want to buy it on a CD, you know, to make like 10 bucks to fill my gas tank. Yeah. And so there, yeah, there was a lot of years of living in my car below poverty level and eating very, you know, questionable Mexican food and just surviving. Yeah. And I, and I, but I, I thrive in those scenarios. And those are the ones that make me feel the most humbled because I know what I had to do, what I was capable of doing, to get to where I am now. I think that's, I think a lot of us maybe have somewhat st the same stories, but first off, I think photography is humbling. Mm -hmm. And you know, it is the old starving artist story that I, I know very few photographers that started off at the top. But, right, yeah. You know, uh, and you never appreciate it if you do. You no, know? And, and the fact that you, you, you remember what it's like to you know, sleep in the back seat of your car and you know, wear the same clothes for a week and you know, go yeah. through all the things just because you believe in what you're doing. Right. And it's, uh, it's just tremendous. For me, you know, I find photography, be, not at this point, because uh, like yourself, I'm doing pretty damn well in it, mm -hmm. but it's also great therapy. Yeah, there absolutely. is nothing better, would you agree, than going out and taking absolutely. a picture. You take all the stress and all the crap, and you know, it just, it just releases yeah, things. I mean, you especially know? after you put in the time to plan, and think about it, and, and you know, consider, all, you know, wait, what, why, what, you know, all these things that drive you to go do it. I think it's incredibly fulfilling. There's, there's no greater sense of accomplishment, really, when all the factors come together. And like yourself, you're dealing with weather and, and oh, yeah. you know, timing and, and, you know, the tides, the wind, the sea, the, the sky. There's so many things that come together to create what I would feel is to be an iconic image. And, and that's really, um, it's, it, it truly is. It's, a, it's an experience I'm grateful to have. It's interesting as we, we look at the world today, and uh, you do workshops, I, I, I do workshops, and there's a tremendous interest, specifically with the cameras that are coming out today, because they're easy to use and mm -hmm. it's very yeah. hard not to take a good the picture. The barrier of entry is way easier yeah. now than, than it was. Uh, sure. But as a result, you know, and, and the, the price point's not too bad to get into either. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, consider you get a Sony A7R 3 for what, $3,400 and buy a few lenses and you can be well outfitted 
And you know, you watch and how many people enjoy going out to do the landscape. To me, it's been rewarding, but it's also been disappointing. How's that? The more and more I go out, the more and more people I run into putting mm -hmm. their tripods in the same holes. I don't know if you've seen the same thing, but you know, we've gone to a lot of iconic locations and you know, you can go to the bridge on Lofoten and find 50 people lined up on the bridge taking the same picture at the right, same time right. you are, day in and day out. You know what I found is that if you use a camera to make a living, that's noble. If you use a camera to, um, to raise a family, it's amazing. But at a certain point, I think that all those things are going to become unfulfilling. And I, and I feel like we, we both know that, you know, we use a camera to hopefully inspire people and to hopefully push them to seek out experiences that only, you know, those who, of us who've been lucky enough to have. And so I, I go back and forth because I feel like, well, I, I'm taking pictures to hopefully inspire people to see these places. But then when I see them there, I can't really get upset because this is, you yeah. know, because how much better is it that they're there, even if their tripods are overlapping each other, they're there experiencing nature as opposed to being inside their house playing video games. Yeah, it's and I think that's like, that's a part of, I think, what the world needs. It needs more outdoor experiences. And if, if photography is people's entry point to the outdoors, then I'm, I feel like I'm grateful to share that space with well, that's them. great, because so many people take a negative viewpoint of it. You know, I, I like the same thing, but what I've discovered, and I'm a good friend of Art Wolf's, and mm -hmm. he and I do a lot of workshops together, and one of the things that, he showed me, and it's just become fascinating, is finding the photograph in the broad landscape. Right. You know, the, the shot that if you zoom in and, and right. isolate it, you might even have an abstract, but right. now you've got the iconic picture, but you also got a, 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 something totally and, different and new. So it's about seeing also. Yeah. And I think that something to speak to Art, you know, and his expertise and yours as well, is like, the, the, the thing is, in the beginning, it wasn't, I mean, you may, correct me if I'm wrong, but in the beginning, wasn't it all about the hunt? Wasn't it all about the idea of going out and finding this place? Yeah. And, and all of a sudden what happened is we had, we all <laughs> tasted this little bit of success and then we, we kind of want to go back there and, and we want to find the same experience. And that's kind of the definition of crazy is going to the same, doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. But, and that's the beauty is that nowadays, although some of these places have been seen and they've been explored and they've been shot to death, it's like, I still enjoy going and looking for new places and places that excite me, just like Iceland did, you know, 10 years ago or whatever. And, and you know, for you, 15 years ago, it's yeah. like around that next corner or over that next headland, all of a sudden there's a new iconic image and there's waiting still, for you. there still are new Tons. images. And it's, Tons. you know, it is, a lot of people stop at the same places, but yeah. the more we explore, um, you know, I work a lot with Daniel Bergman there and we've done a lot of roads, even with, you know, him living yeah. there and found spots where he didn't even know about yeah, yeah. it's like wow and, and how much more rewarding is that when you're all of a sudden like wow here's a new place like that's i feel like when i was starting in photography that's all i cared about I, everything was new everything was exciting and so i sometimes i feel like when i'm getting bummed because certain places are a little busy i'm like well wait this isn't why i picked up a camera anyway i wanted to see the experience the new and so i I guess I feel like we all, we can, we can still find that if we're, yeah, we can. you know. You know, I've been back to the same places waiting for something iconic to happen. Right. Perfect clouds. Something perfectly. new, yeah. And, you know, so many times I'm disappointed. And then one time you show up, 60 mile an hour winds, 20 below zero, those clouds are blowing across. Nobody's the, there. And, and it's over, like, yeah. can't even feel your fingers and you know you're getting something cool, that, yeah. you know, you waited years. You came right. back many times and you're walking off with something that's different. I, I totally agree. And that's, and that's what's so unique is like photography is ultimately that tool where it, you can, you can, it, it rewards the patient, you know, and it rewards those who are willing to put in the time. And that's so, it's, we're so lucky to be able to have that, you know. Who's, who's one of the influencers in your style of photography? Do you have a... I'm, uh, I'm sure um, that you know Michael Fatali. Yeah, he's a, yeah, okay. he's an amazing landscape photographer from the uh, southwest of Utah. And he was an early mentor of mine and uh, a person that I, I really, um, I, ha I was lucky enough to have a chance to um, train with a little bit. And uh, you know, his, his keen expertise, but also just his, his patient eye and his way of making something simple out of something complex was really, um, was really significant to me. Also Ansel Adams, obviously, for oh, yeah, so many yeah. people, but I, I've been lucky enough to actually, next week, or next, yeah, next week, I'm going to Ansel's archive to look through his archived images. Oh. And I've been able to kind of work with um, the trust a little bit and to, to have a deeper right. understanding of his body of work. And that's been really fulfilling 
to me as, as a younger photographer. Oh, we did it just did a series with Charlie Kramer. I don't know if you're familiar with Charlie. He's here in San yeah. Jose. Yeah. And we did the shooting with the masters. Once a year I go out and find a photographer and spend oh, a week cool. with him and we shoot with him and then go back and process with him oh, and make beautiful. prints. And you know, he was very close to Ansel yeah. and uh, you know, just uh, amazing kind of guy. I took uh, and took a small course with Ansel back, I think it was 74 or something. Wow, uh, it must but, have been you know, incredible. Sitting around and just drinking and talking about photography, right. just kind of like oh, we're doing a lot of yeah. this event. <laughs> and of course, I, I didn't realize he was going to be so iconic back then. I just, yeah. you know, was young in my career and yeah. this was a cool dude and, you know, it was just fun. And I, I know a lot of people that have done that also and you just get inspired by the simplicity of the approach that some mm -hmm. of these guys have. Now, to kind of wrap things up, one of the things that I think you're well known for, not only in your photography and so forth, but um, is the way you've managed to get new business and do things. You're kind of a social media uh, icon. Tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> social media to me was never a business plan or, or scheme or, you know, I was a, uh, somebody who actually like kind of thought it was ridiculous at first that I was going to be sharing images before <laughs> the magazine would publish them. And I remember even like kind of having these discussions with my editors and whatnot. And so I, I came to social media as a means of telling stories. And I, it's funny because people, you know, similar to like they want that big break. What was that big break in your career? They want that like, what's that thing I can do? How do I gain those new followers? And it's hard for me to tell them like, hey, like, honestly, nothing is ever going to make up for just being a real storyteller. And I feel like that's been the most important thing to me is learning how to tell deeper stories, the more meaning and more purpose. And, and the, I've also really tried to learn how to diversify my income, uh, meaning that I'm not just be getting stuck in the editorial world yeah. or the image licensing or, or stock photography or, or, or commercial photography, which is what I do mostly, commercial photography and directing. And uh, I've, I've tried to learn how to monetize social media in a way that feels authentic to myself with books and films and things that I create. Um, and, I, and I love that, that we can use your network of people yeah. to essentially like share what you're doing and they support you. I'm lucky enough to be, have a, a portion of my business supported by those people. It, it, it's, a, it's an interesting change in things. You know, totally. Um, yeah. You know, back in my day, it was, we had to put cut sheets out and put, you know, display an American showcase and, yeah. you know, do things totally different. And now, you know, the C part of that, and of course, I'm part of the whole multimedia thing, big right. website and everything. Yeah, I mean, you're yeah. one of the, like, first comers to, like, you know, Lumis Landscape is one of, like, the, the oh. premier first websites ever where you could even get a camera review or what's this thing, you know, and that was really huge because I remember, I mean, there's still articles that I'm referencing now that are like, you know, that we're explaining like, oh, what's Ciba Chrome versus this? I know, and, it's just, and it's awesome. And some of that stuff is timeless. It really is. That's um, important. And that's, and I think that's the thing is like, I, if you can look it up and Google it and reference it still, you know uh, that it's got, it's got a lot of value. It is. It's an amazing time. I don't want to take up more of your time, but I'll tell you what I would like to do. Yeah. If, and of course, it's always a like. Maybe somewhere our paths will cross and we can go out shooting for a couple I would days. Love that. Bring Michael and, you know, go deeper, go deeper into the, yeah. the whole experience yeah. of seeing and shooting and so forth. It's always forth. fun to see how people see the world. And yeah. that's, that's honestly been the most eye opening experience is you meet photographers and you realize that they see the world in a very interesting way and, and you learn so much from those people. And yeah. so that, that's what I, I love about this career is people I get to meet and interact with. And well, you so, know, I yeah. like it that you don't mind sharing. I mean, oh, it's, so a yeah. lot of photographers are, uh, they're secret places. It's, and it's, it's the, the old guard yeah. versus the new yeah, guard. Is, and I think that you, you've, ush, you've helped usher in that era of where, you know, nowadays the photographer that's most valuable is the one that's the most approachable. And I, I've really tried to always aim to be approachable and to share any knowledge that I've gained. Done a good job of that. Yeah. I follow you religiously on Instagram. Yeah. I'm always amazed when I watch you packing oh. to get off on another adventure, <laughs> and it's always so yeah. cool. So down below will be the links for uh, Chris's site and his Instagram account, and of course the Luminous Landscape account. Don't forget to subscribe if you've never subscribed before, and if you ring the bell, you'll get notified next time we have something cool. So Chris, Cheers. thanks Thank very so much. much. Yeah, appreciate appreciate it. it. And everybody, I will see you on the Luminous Landscape.